Our week is off and running on a very cold note, and it gets a whole lot colder. I'm Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey, tracking some light snow and bitterly cold air straight ahead. Volunteers are helping sort donated items so the Catholic Action Center can give them out this week. She navigated briars and bushes. She navigated uh, significant depth ditch lines. And we're learning more today about the dangerous trek a young girl took to get help following a plane crash in western Kentucky. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 5. The taste of what's to come, a bitter cold start to our week. We didn't even make it out of the 20s today, and much colder air is on the way. Yeah, and before that Arctic blast, some areas could actually see a little bit of snow overnight. We begin with WKYT Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey, who is tracking the wintry weather on the First Alert Defender. Yeah, clouds beginning to filter in. That is a sign of things to come for parts of the region later tonight. As you mentioned, a little light snowmaker for some areas. Sunshine that we had in Lexington today, really not doing very much to warm us up. Take a look outside. Here's what it looks like on that western horizon as you see the ice crystal clouds that are coming on into town. 24 degrees. That's been the high so far. 18 is what it feels like when you throw a little bit of a wind into the mix. Live first alert defender tracking some of those snowflakes into parts of Illinois and Indiana. The stronger snows are just now breaking out ahead of our clipper that is working out of Omaha toward northern parts of Missouri and that system is going to work its way for areas just to the north of the bluegrass state, at least with the heaviest snows. The area I've outlined here in the blue arrows showing the best chance for accumulating snows overnight. There are going to be some areas within that that get better than five or six inches of snow. Now we're on the southern fringe of that, which means a very sharp cutoff on the southern edge of the light snows. There's at least a chance of getting some flakes into parts of the Lexington metro. But the farther north that we go, better the chance of seeing snow here into the northern parts of Kentucky, where we're talking about an inch or so of accumulation. Greenup, AA Highway, back towards sections of Covington. Then, guys, it's all about the Arctic Express that pulls into town for the middle of the week. I'm talking about dangerously low wind chills. But I'll come back. In a few minutes. Chris, we'll see you then with a blast of dangerous cold coming this week. Volunteers at a Lexington organization want to make sure those without a place to stay warm keep safe. Workers at God's Net spent the day sorting donated clothing that will be given out to the homeless. As our Sam Smith tells us, it's a race against time to get the coats and the blankets out there before the cold moves in. Earlier today, volunteers sorted through items donated over the holidays, separating warm weather items. From cold weather items. God's net was closed the last 10 days, but that didn't stop people from donating over the break. Thousands of blankets and other warm weather items were donated. All of those donations were just sitting in boxes and bags. Volunteers were tasked with picking out those warm items so they can be given out this week. Tomorrow night, volunteers will go out to find people without shelter and offer them a ride to a homeless shelter. If they decline, these items will be handed out so they can make it through the cold night. For our folks who are on the streets, for those who are unsheltered, this isn't just about being cold. This is about surviving. The sorting continues tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. right here at God's Net on East 7th Street. In Lexington, Sam Smith, WKYT. Now, the last time Catholic Action Center volunteers went to search for people out in the cold weather, 60 people were found. No one, they say, will be turned away from a shelter tomorrow night. Still no official word yet on what caused a deadly fire this morning in Lincoln County. The victim was found in the bedroom of his home on Maywood Road off of Kentucky 1247 south of Stanford. As WKYT's Phil Pendleton reports, the victim's family believes a wood-burning stove may be to blame. I'm told that 54-year-old Danny Bailey lived in Lincoln County almost all of his life, the most recent years in this decades-old home that now sits as a total loss. The fire was called out just after 7 Monday morning, and emergency personnel were first on the scene and hearing that someone was trapped inside. Firefighters arrived to find a home fully involved, and relatives say that 54-year-old Danny Bailey was found in the front bedroom. The cause of the fire and Bailey's cause of death isn't known yet. Relatives say Bailey was a farmer and a lifelong Lincoln County resident who devoted his life to working and caring for his elderly parents. 
He was the first thing he'd done when he got up in the morning, he'd go to my mom's and uh, help mom with dad getting up out of bed. And that was the last thing he'd done at night was to help her get him back in, back in bed and, and before he'd go home. Kentucky State Police and the State Fire Marshal are investigating, which is standard procedure in house fires like this. Coming up at 6 o'clock, more on how Danny Bailey is being remembered. But for now, in Lincoln County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. Well, the cause of the fire is still unknown, but investigators tell WKYT they don't suspect any foul play. A seven year old girl was the only one left alive after a plane crash in Kentucky. She walked nearly a mile with a broken wrist through the woods in her bare feet to get help. Incredible. Investigators were planning to speak to that young girl today. As Adriana Diaz reports, the NTSB hopes that she may have some information to help them understand why that plane went down in Lyon County last Friday night. This is the mangled wreckage site seven year old Sailor Gutzler managed to walk away from alive after the plane she was riding in crashed, killing her father, a former commercial pilot who was at the controls, her mother Kim, nine year old sister Piper, and 14 year old cousin Sierra Wilder. She believed that her family was, was deceased, uh, but she hoped that they were just sleeping. Kentucky authorities say Sailor used her non-injured arm to free herself. Wearing just shorts and a t-shirt, she trekked nearly a mile through a heavily wooded area barefoot in near freezing temperatures. She navigated briars and bushes. She navigated uh, significant depth ditch lines. Eventually, the second grader spotted the porch lights of this house. 71-year-old Larry Wilkins answered the door. I've seen a, a, a bloody little girl with tears in her eyes, her lips trembling. What did she say to you when she got into the ambulance? <laughs> I, can't, I can't talk about that. <laughs> she wanted me to go with her because I wish she didn't know anybody else. Sailor's eyewitness account will likely be key to finding out exactly what went wrong. What do you think brought her to your door? I think the good Lord had something to do with it, you know. And I think he's probably got plans for her. The bravest kid I've ever seen in my life. Adriana Diaz, CBS News, Catawba, Kentucky. Thank goodness she found such a compassionate man to help her that night. CBS News did talk to the family of the 14-year-old teenager who died in that crash. In a statement to CBS News, the mother of Sierra Wilder said, quote, My baby girl was the sweetest, kindest person you'll ever come across. Words cannot express how much she's missed now and forever. State police are searching for a man who held a security guard at gunpoint during a pharmacy robbery. Our county by county coverage begins in Perry County. It happened early Sunday morning at the Leatherwood Blackie Clinic in the Cornetsville community. The security guard told police that he was making his rounds through the clinic when he ran into an armed man inside the building. Police say the man held the guard at gunpoint while he broke into the pharmacy, stealing prescription drugs. The guard was not injured. In Kenton County, a man who was badly burned in a Meth lab explosion has died. 42 year old James Hall died from his injuries at the University of Cincinnati Medical Center. Police say Hall suffered severe burns when a meth lab blew up in the basement of a home in Covington on December 21st. Police arrested 33 year old Crystal Smith following the explosion. She's charged with manufacturing meth. The number of flu cases at the University of Kentucky Hospital continue to go up. Doctors telling us today they are treating about 50 people a day for flu-like symptoms. At this time of year, they say they normally only treat around 20 people a day for the flu. Visitor restrictions remain in effect at UK Hospital. For the time being, visitors under the age of 12 and anyone with flu-like symptoms are not allowed inside. Only two people can visit a patient at a time, and those visitors may be asked to wear masks. After a long break, the UK Wildcats finally return to the court tomorrow night. Yeah, it'll be good. The Cats open the SEC schedule at Rupp Arena against Ole Miss. WKYT's Rob Bromley joins us with our big blue coverage at 5. Hi, Rob. And hello. Tomorrow night, it'll be 10 days since the Wildcats defeated U of L. They get back in action tomorrow night, opening up Southeastern Conference play against Mississippi. Uh, John Calipari, for the most part, has been working his team twice a day. He said he's asked each player what they want to add to their game. A key emphasis has been on the backboard, but Cal has now turned to other things. We looked at, and I talked publicly about it, our defensive rebounding was 
atrocious. And we zeroed in on it. And now this week we zeroed in on two or three things, really one with a couple side items that we just wanted to make sure we were getting better at. Um, after we get through this week, it may shift to something else. Uh, what I did with the guards was really a simple thing to get them to think different as they play, and which is some of the things I did a year ago. So it's the beginning of the SEC tomorrow night. Mississippi in town. Cats a big favorite. 7 o'clock start the game televised by the SEC Network. John Calipari said today that Alex Poitras will undergo surgery to repair that torn ACL tomorrow. Poitras left today for the operation. He was injured in practice in December. Rob, thank you. The Wildcats remain number one in both major polls today. The vote unanimous in the AP poll, but one voter in the coaches poll voted for Duke. Nearly two years after bombs went off at the finish line of the Boston Marathon, jury selection has begun. 1,200 people will be called into Boston's federal court over the next few days to be considered as potential jurors. The case itself is set to begin January 26th and could last months. Joe Hart Sarniav faces dozens of charges ranging from four counts of murder to using a weapon of mass destruction. Crews looking for debris and more victims in the search for Air Asia Flight 8501 continue to deal with more weather problems. With the severe weather in the area, visibility in the water is very low, and one large piece of wreckage detected in the search turned out to be from a sunken ship. Crews continue to search for the black boxes or flight data recorders, but the pingers that send out acoustic signals have only about 24 days of power left. A man accused of ambushing two Pennsylvania state troopers, killing one of them, was in court today for a preliminary hearing. Eric Freen is charged with first degree murder in the September attack outside of police barracks. The manhunt for Freen lasted almost seven weeks before he was found near an airport hangar. Prosecutors are seeking the death penalty for Freen. Lawmakers are descending on Washington ahead of the new Congress set to convene tomorrow. Republicans will control both the House and the Senate for the first time in nearly a decade. President Obama and incoming Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell have said they'll work together, but it won't be easy. Also, conservative Congressman Louis Gohmert and Ted Yoho have announced their bids to challenge John Boehner for House Speaker. January is National Radon Action Month, and to promote awareness, the Fayette County Health Department is offering free radon testing kits. Radon is an invisible, odorless, radioactive gas found naturally in rocks and soil. It can enter homes through cracks and other openings in the foundation, but the only way to know if your home has an elevated radon level is to test it. Surgeon General says radon is second leading cause of lung cancer, only second to smoking. Um, and that's a long-term effect. If you plan on living in your home for 20 to 30 years, we recommend testing. You can pick up your free test kit Monday through Friday from 8 to 4 at the front desk of the health department.